G'day legends, it's Dylan Warren here with Warren Weekly episode two. Now in the first episode, we asked you guys what you wanted to see in these YouTube videos and you want to learn how to do a board slide on a mountain board. So we've taken you down to the local skate park and I'm gonna show you how to board slide a mountain board. Okay, so to learn any trick on a mountain board, you need to break it down into small steps and that's exactly what we're going to do today. Now normally I learn how to do a trick out on a nice soft grass area and that's what I wanted to do today. But Melbourne is going through this thing where it just rains all the time even though it's summer. So we're at the skate park to get a bit of shelter. We're gonna start things off on this flat bar here. You could probably get one welded up for yourself or buy one. It obviously doesn't need to be this big. This is just what we have today. But I'm gonna start by board sliding the end of the rail to see what it feels like. The most common mistake I see people when they do board slides on a mountain board is their legs go straight and they fall off the back or fall forward. So keep your knees nice and low. You wait a little bit forward, not all the way forward like this, but just a little bit forward so you can't fall backwards. That is the most common way you'll fall off your mountain board is by falling backwards. So this is what it looks like from the side. Knees bent, chest up, looking this way. A little bit forward, that's perfect. Now obviously you wanna learn how to ollie on the flat ground first and do a 180 on the flat ground. Because essentially you're ollieing and doing a 90 degrees turn onto the rail. Now obviously you're gonna start with a much lower rail, but the action is the same. So you're going to approach the rail on the side, pretty much with a slight angle. See how my board is slightly angled towards the end of the rail? You don't want to be completely straight, you want to have a slight angle, so you're almost turning towards the rail. Once you come up to the rail, you're going to lift the front of your board up as hard as you can, and at your peak, you're going to pull the back of your board up. Once you're in the air, you're going to rotate your shoulders open and turn your front foot onto the rail. Now this is kind of cool to look at. When you're rotating on, you can actually land with your wheels this far off the ground, okay? So you can kind of just push your board, land like that and push the board onto the rail. You don't need, necessarily need to jump up high and land like this. You can do a little manual and then it's such a small jump, you can just push onto the rail like that. Okay, this right here is Nate Dog Wax Company, Wet Wax. Now when you wax a rail, you don't want to go hardcore and rub all the wax on. You just want to do a little light coat. Not even a coat, just a little touch. And then you want to get your board and rub it on it and see how it goes. This one's already pretty slippery so you don't need too much. You don't want to be that kook at the skate park that just rubs heaps of wax everywhere and you ruin everyone's day. So I've been to a fair few mountain board parks around the world and a lot of these mountain board parks have kickers onto rails. So you barely jump onto the rail, which is kind of good for learning, but also isn't the correct technique. And I think you should just learn it the proper way from the start. So the reason why we learn it this way is you want to be able to approach the rail from either side. So if you eventually start riding in the streets, you can actually ollie onto a rail um, from the side where, without thinking you need to have a kicker ramp, which you do not. As you can see here, I'm staring at the end of the rail and doing a slight carve towards the rail. As I mentioned before, it's always good to start at the end of the rail and build your confidence up. Nice and slow. In this clip, look how much I'm pulling my front foot up, almost like a manual. Once the board makes contact with the rail, I push my front foot a little further to balance the board out. As you can see in this clip, my shoulders are open and pointing forward. When I want to land, I rotate my shoulders and my front foot back to the front. All right, we've got the one and only Joel Lee. We normally come down here to practice for our mountain board show. And we're actually, I just convinced Joel to try a board slide. He's only just learned how to board slide on a skateboard and now he's trying it on the mountain board. Oh yeah. Okay, so that was a good first attempt. He got at the end of the rail because he's learning. But the only thing he did then was potentially came a little bit too close to the rail and he didn't lift the front of his board up high enough and he kind of hit the rail with his wheels. So this time Joel's gonna try and lift his board up further and maybe pop a little bit before the rail so he has enough clearance to get onto the rail nicely. But I'm feeling confident. Okay, so that one was much better. He got on the rail, he actually approached the rail on a better angle, lifted his board up higher so he got on the rail. That was perfect. His weight was in a good spot. The only thing he wasn't really ready for, because it's only his second time, 
is was to come out straight. So the way you come out straight, your shoulders obviously open because you're sliding this way. When you want to turn around and come out regular, all you need to do is rotate your front shoulder back to the center and your board will come around. Now, when you're learning tricks, it can be a lot of things to think about. So don't get upset if you have to try this a hundred times because eventually it will click. You just need to hang into it. Hang on, hang into it. Why do I really suck at words today? All right, here goes Joel. Oh, thanks Joel. <laughs> All right, that was much better. He landed on there and he came out straight. He was just a bit nervous because it's his third try. So you'll get a bit more confident. It'll come out smoother, but that technically was pretty much the right motion. The only other tip I give Joel is when he's coming out, he's rotating his shoulder so he's straight again, is to look forward in the direction you will go. If you are ever struggling with a mountain board trick, keep falling over, uh, is because you're looking at your feet and you're not looking in the direction you want to go. If you're looking in the direction you want to go, that's going to straighten out your body and allow you to go straight forward. That was really good. I think it just clicked for Joel. What I told him was, instead of trying to jump up onto the rail, just lift your front foot as high as you can and your board will balance out on the rail. It shouldn't be such a strenuous jump up. It should just be a nice little casual ching. You guys at home could probably jump this high because you think about it, your wheels, your board is about this high off the rail and then it's only this far to jump. Yeah, I, remember, but I forgot to turn back. So now Joel's trying to broadside the rail longer. That time, he didn't really choose where his shoulders were. So there should be really a two-step motion where you have your shoulders open like this, or they're open like this. Joel, when he popped, he kind of awkwardly jumped and had it in between both, like this. He wasn't fully open. So his shoulders were a little bit open, so that's why he came out a bit weird. So now he's gonna open his shoulders in two stages. <laughs> so straight, and then open and then straight. A little bit of weight forward. He's gonna try and board side about here now, I reckon. Woo! That one's yeah, better. Yeah, this special ending. Getting there. So you can teach an old dog new tricks. That's it. For all the story. <laughs> oh, wow, that oh, was man. it. That, that actually was felt good. Perfect, dude. That felt like Dylan Warren. You look better. He's my coach. <laughs> when you learn a new mountain board trick, you have to do it three times, okay? So it cements in your memory. Oh. I know it's scary, it's definitely scary, but it's, it's important because then it slowly makes sense in your brain. I'm actually overcoming a fear. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, seriously, I haven't really progressed <laughs> in mountain boarding. Well, you're progressing really quick. Right now, this yeah. is progression, I'm taking risks. Yeah, but it's calculated scary. risks. And do you think it made it a bit easier for you to break it down into small steps? Definitely. To achieve the larger goal? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, not even just spruiking the, deal, the Warren Weekly. <laughs> I'm saying I really didn't, I had a general idea, but you saw the first one I did, I just didn't have it. And, but those steps of getting your nose up and then the turning and your shoulders, yeah, it actually made a difference. Oh, oh, oh. That was good. <laughs> well done, Joel. Thank you, Dylan. Thanks for teaching me something. <laughs> Winning with Lauren Weekly. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, he's a rail you guy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Say it, having the truck flipped. I think that makes a big difference. Just oh, in terms just of all in all and easy. Like, yeah. I really noticed that. Just oh. Yeah, another thing uh, I noticed on that one is the base of these boards is the PBT layer, but it's actually a textured PBT. And Hang I think on. it. Don't get too tech talk on them. What is PBT? This is Warren Weekly. Yeah, Holly no Butyl Terastolate <laughs> is actually the chemical name, but it's like a slick base basically on the on the base. So it protects the glass, it does all that, but it's really good for sliding. Do you know the history of PBT, Paul Schmidt and all oh, those yeah, guys? Yeah. Like, you know, Ever Slick, the original kind of skate stuff. But anyway, it's slick. But our new textured PBT, I don't know why, I don't, I'm not getting too techy on that, but it is super duper slick. Maybe the wax like stays in the it little does. like textures. It does. Yeah, it does. It actually does. So yeah, give them the thumbs up to the board for the week. <laughs> okay, so that's the very basics of how you get started trying to board slide a little bit of a rail. But obviously when you get better at it, you can come and hit down rails like this and even kickers to flat bars like this. I'm going to show you how to do that. But before we do, we're going to head to Colorado Springs and talk to Jason Lee and he's going to tell us a tale from the road. Tale from the road, here we go. Early 2000s, we're on the stunt tour 
and we're going to legit downtown New York City and we had this 40-foot stunt trailer which would not fit anywhere and so um, Josh Nepper the pro rider he is and was he said he would drive the truck and the trailer around all night from like 8 at night till like 4 o'clock in the morning so we didn't have to worry about getting towed and not making our big uh, appointment in the morning which was for Good Morning America so he drove up and down Times Square slowly just all night long the guys a rock star there's some uh, tales from the road MBS mountain boards all right I hope you enjoyed that tales from the road with Jason T Lee if there's anything you want to know about the history of mountain boarding it doesn't necessarily have to be a tale from the road it can be anything about the history of MBS over the last almost 30 years Write it in the comments below and I'll get Jason to answer your question in the next week's episode. Speaking of Jason, Jason Lee's brother Joel Lee is getting ready to drop in this, uh, this roll in. Should we film his next run? Oh, that was very nice. Oh, <laughs> oh, he's he's good. Good. That was better. Yeah. Oh, what do you call that little maneuver? I think that's my move. All right, the next obstacle we have here is this little fly out rail off the fun box. The thing that's different this time is you've got to launch off this little bank ramp here onto the rail and then land into the bank again. So we're gonna try that a few times and I'll tell you how you can do it. Okay, so this is quite similar to just doing a board side on the flat. The main difference is when you're coming in to land in the bank, you need to shift your weight slightly forward to account for the angle of the bank. You'll see a lot of people when they try this fall backwards because they're not ready to land on the angle of the bank. So just have your weight slightly forward when you're coming off the rail, landing on the ramp. Did a few into the bank. Now we're gonna spice it up and I'm gonna to try to do a board side and land fakie land, switch the opposite way I started. So it's fun. It's the gateway to let me have a 270 out. Okay, so when you're in the board side position, you just wanna keep your shoulders open and continue to rotate them around to your opposite side so you're landing fakie. As you can see here, I'm using my left arm to pull myself around a little bit further and I'm swinging my back foot, my right foot around to face the front. Done a few on the fly out. I'm gonna try one and see if I can do the flat and then the down rail. I haven't tried that before and it just worked out. After this, I'm going to show you guys how you can boardside down a rail, which is cool. Because if you're trying to get into riding street, riding handrails is a big fun part of it. But before we do, we're going to go across to the MBS team now. I think Emlyn actually just bought a new board. Hey Dylan. Hello to all the mountain board enthusiasts out there. So I'm Emlyn. I'm here in the Forest of Dean, which is a beautiful part of the UK, kind of on the border between England and Wales. And I'm over here because I just picked up an MBS Razor. So this is an old board. It actually came out quite a few years before I started mountain boarding. There's not many of these around in the UK. And I'm going to try and change over some parts and take it for a ride. So there we have it, a whole new complete retro MBS board. Uh, I can't wait to go and ride some spots on it, so let's go find some. Okay, so it's pretty damp today in Bristol, but I've come to a spot called Curbside, which is undercover. The BMX has built this over lockdown. Uh, let's see if I can do anything on this razor. So when I go back to the workshop, I'm going to put these bindings a bit further out for some new holes because at the moment I'm getting wheel bite here and also kind of, if I did like a nose binding I'll just go straight over. Uh, but it's feeling good up on that.
This one's for all the free riders out there. Alright, so I thought it'd be rude not to try out the razor on the nearby pump track whilst I'm here. So let's see how I get on. Alright, so I've come down to the infamous Dean Lane Skate Park. It's one of the oldest in Bristol. It's got a good history for being very gnarly. Uh, there's some random vans in the way at the moment, but I can have a play and see what I can do on a map. Okay, so as this episode is all about board slides, I'm going to have to see how this thing fares on a rail. So you can join me for the first board slide on my razor. Nice. So what I was doing there was a little bit of a lip slide because I was going, I'm regular, and I was going on from the left hand side of the rail and my back wheels were going over the rail. So if you're going kind of front side like that, if your back wheels going over the rail, that's called a lip slide. And then you can come off regular or fakie. I find them a bit easier when I'm jumping off the floor like that, especially on a bit of a longer rail. I kind of find it a bit hard to come on from the side for a normal board slide. Uh, so yeah, lip slides are the next stage after board slides if you want to take it up a level. Okay, so my first day on my razor has been absolutely sick. I've mostly stuck to skate park, streety stuff, kind of because of the weather and also because I ran out of time to get to any free ride spots. And maybe, maybe I'll try that next time. All right, that was the MBS team. But speaking of the MBS team, hang on a sec. We have oh, the one and only Nathan Paul, AKA NateDog666, rides for MBS Australia. We're gonna make him do board slides. He just learned how to board slide the down rail last week. Now he's gonna do a few of them for us tonight. All right? Yeah. All Good. Right. Normally when I'm hitting a new down rail or a new handrail, I like to try and ollie the stair set first. So in this case, I'll be ollieing over the bank to the flat just to get a feel of what the speed's like. Now you're gonna pop an ollie onto the rail just like you would normally, but you're probably gonna land three quarters of the way down the rail just because of how the angles work. Once you're on the rail, it's really important to have your weight forward the same angle as what the rail is. So I like to try and just keep my weight forward over my toes a little bit so I make sure I don't fall backwards. All right, Joel's just informed me. He's going to try to do the down rail. Here we go. Oh, bit. oh no way! <laughs> Yeah, it's so smooth. Woo <laughs> I just filmed that on the tripod. Jolly's on fire tonight. He never does rails and now he's doing all the rails. <laughs> Alright, we have another question from Mountains Media. I thought I'd just chuck him in this video. It's a quick one. He wants to know how Nolly Backside 180 is a great one. It's very steezy if you do it correctly. So I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to do a Nolly Backside 180 before we try the biggest rail at the park, the big 10 stair. First of all, you need to know how to nolly. So what you're gonna do is put all the pressure in your front foot, like you're going to do a nose manual. Then you're gonna pull your back foot up towards your chest to flatten out your board. Once your board's flattened out, you're gonna look where you're landing and land with your knees bent. 
Okay, similar position for the nollie backside 180. You're going to have all your weight on your front foot. You're going to rotate your shoulders behind your back. So you have a bit of pre-wind. When you're about to pop, you're going to push off the front of your board. You're going to have all your power and weight in your front foot. You're going to pull the back of your board up as high as you can. And whilst you're doing that, you're going to rotate your shoulders around. So you do the 180. Once you land, you're not going to look at your feet because you'll fall off. You're going to look directly in front of you to roll away. If you get that one pretty easy, the switch backs I want to use a fun one to learn as well. Just make sure you actually pop off your tail for extra style points. If you did this for half an hour every night during the week, your style would improve significantly. you get a little bit stronger every day and you'd have more tricks. So this is so easy to do. You guys can do it. Get off the couch. We started on the flat bar on the ground, we hit the end of it. Step by step, we got a little bit more confident, we took our time, we were patient, the lights turned on, and now we're gonna try and board side the biggest rail here, the 10 stair, 10 stair rail. So if you're looking for something else to do, I'd probably try and learn board side to fakie. And then the next easiest natural progression is probably the lip slide. So the lip slide is you'd actually approach the rail from the opposite side, so from that side, and you'd ollie over the rail and land on the board side over here. I'm feeling pretty good today, so I might try one for the first time tonight, straight up on the big rail. But before you do, I just posted a new YouTube video on my personal YouTube channel, Dylan Warren. I, uh, earlier in the year, I converted an ambulance and turned it into a camper van. And I drove it all the way around Australia, mountain boarding and skateboarding every day. If you want to see that, There'll be a card or something up here where you can go watch that. Anyway, enough of that. I'm gonna hit the rail. What another amazing day of mountain boarding. Just remember, all you need to do is get off the couch and go and ride your board anywhere you can because at the end of it, you'll feel accomplished and you'll have a really fun day. Now, you probably already know what time it is, but it is time for the Rider of the Week. This week, this is the Rider of the Week. The Rider of the Week competition is a competition we have at, at the end of every video, every week, when we see who has been posting the coolest mountain board clips of the week. And at the end of the month, we're gonna choose a winner of the month and you can win MBS prizes. So all you need to do is film a new trick every week. It can't be an old one and email it to us at social at mbs.com. We'll choose the best ones and we'll put it in next week's video. Speaking of next week's video, the way this Warren Weekly series works is that you guys get to choose what next week's episode is about. So write in the comment section of this video what you wanna see in next week's video and we'll make a video based on your ideas. Alrighty guys, that's it. Get off the couch, go ride your board and I'll see you next time on the hill.